American astronaut Sunita Williams and Butch Wilmore have returned to Earth after spending more than nine months in space at the International Space Station. It was supposed to be an eight-day mission, which got extended to a nine-month mission. There are multiple reasons for it. There are bureaucratic inefficiencies. There is even politics that's come into the way of it between the Democrats and the Republicans. And finally, it is Trump and Musk who managed to get both Senator Williams and Butch Wilmore out of the ISS and back to Earth. But this also holds valuable lessons for the entire international space community. From everybody, from NASA to ISRO to even Elon Musk and SpaceX is saying that the next big frontier in space technology and space exploration is going to be how to put a human on Mars. Well, we can attempt to put humans on Mars, only we can't leave them there for nine months unattended. We'll delve into all of that a little bit deeper, but first, let me bring you up to speed with what an emotional homecoming it was for Sunita Williams and for Butch Wilmore. And splashdown, Crew 9 back on Earth. A harrowing finish to the end of a long journey. Parachutes deployed, slowing the capsule barreling towards Earth. The crew of nine astronauts landed off the coast of Tallahassee, Florida. And SpaceX Freedom, splash down. NASA astronaut Nick Haig and Russian cosmonaut Alexander Gorbunov rode alongside Butch Wilmore and Sonny Williams, finally back to Earth, splashing down Tuesday evening after Butch and Sonny spent more than 285 days aboard the International Space Station. The Boeing Starliner they rode up to space in was deemed unfit for them to return on due to helium leaks and propulsion issues. The pair was able to hitch a ride back home aboard a SpaceX Dragon capsule. We see main shoots cut. Nick, Alex, Butch, Sunny, on behalf of SpaceX, welcome home. After their splashdown, recovery vessels zoomed up to the Crew Dragon, standing at the ready after the capsule plunged back into the atmosphere. SpaceX recovery ship named Megan used a large rig to haul the capsule carrying the astronauts out of the water. Afterwards, the crew was slated to be flown to Ellington Field and finally taken here to nearby Johnson Space Center to eventually be reunited with their families. The big issue is the, these two astronauts miss their families. The astronauts were originally slated to be away from home for an eight-day mission, but had their timeline extended to nine months. Back here on Earth, their capsule was greeted by dolphins. At the Johnson Space Center, I'm Lee Waldman. An eight-day mission which became a nine-month ordeal and a welcome back with uh, dolphins which were bombing around in the Gulf of America. Now, an extensive rehabilitation program will follow. It spans over a month and a half in three phases, uh, both of which Sunita Williams and Butch Wilmore will have to go through. The rehabilitation program is tailored for every single astronaut who comes back from the space station or from wherever else in outer space back into the Earth. Uh, it'll be scheduled for a couple of hours every day for the next month, month and a half. So here's what uh, Sunita Williams and Butch Wilmore will have to do and endure during the rehabilitation program over the next 45 days. During phase one of the rehabilitation program, Sunita Williams and Butch Wilmore, along with Nick Haig and Alexander Gurbanov, will have to work out and focus on regaining their flexibility, their body strength, and the ability to simply walk. Remember, they've spent nine months in a near zero gravity atmosphere, and therefore, they would have forgotten by simply lack of muscle memory about how to walk and how to use your basic limb functions. Now, in the rehabilitation program's second phase, which will start after about 15 days or so, these NASA astronauts will be doing exercises which make their human body stronger and also improve their mind's functioning when it comes to movements, positions, uh, etc. The astronauts will also be doing exercises and workouts for cardio reconditioning, which of course is absolutely critical because your heart basically start, has to learn to pump more blood again once you've re-entered uh, the Earth's atmosphere. The third and the final phase, which is going to be the last 15 days of this rehabilitation program, that's going to include functional development training through which these astronauts will be able to return to whatever the best physical level of performance was possible prior to their leaving to the International Space Station. Basically, they've gone from human to human minus X and now back again to the, the human level at whatever possible performance level uh, they can attain back. This will be the longest period of the rehabilitation program. So after about a month and a half, they will be allowed to meet with their families and, and mingle with their friend circle, with their colleagues, etc. But for that period, they will be, if not a quarantine, in some form of a semi-quarantine. So let's uh, play out for you CNN's Sanjay Gupta, who is sort of detailing 
What is it that the human body of these astronauts goes through over the period that they were in space and once they are back and what they have to physically endure and train for over the next month, month and a half to try and be able to live uh, a normal human existence as you and I know it uh, back once again. It's been 286 days since astronauts Sonny Williams and Butch Wilmore have felt the pull of Earth's gravity. Gravity is really, really tough. Tough, learning to live with it, but also without it. Our bodies were really built to work in gravity. At NASA's Countermeasures Lab, exercise routines and equipment are designed to help prevent astronauts from losing bone and muscle mass while they're in space. Force is what helps our muscles get stronger. Force is what helps our bones to stay strong. Force is what helps our heart to stay strong by having to pump the blood against gravity. So when you take that force away, you all of a sudden lose a really important stimulus that's important for health. It would be the same thing as uh, if someone was uh, confined to a bed because they had an injury uh, for a long time. It's people lose their muscle strength, they lose their bone strength. That's why astronauts spend hours each day exercising while on the space station. In fact, back in 2012, Williams even showed me how she was preparing to do a triathlon from space so that she could compete with me while I was doing a triathlon on Earth. You're going 17,500 miles an yeah, hour. Yeah, so. I'll be done like that. What am I saying? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be done way before you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'll base it on time. But again, we are talking about an unnatural environment for humans. When you're in space, body fluids shift from the legs to the head and upper body as much as two liters of fluid. NASA says a natural reaction to this is a decrease in the total amount of blood in your blood vessels. That can result in low blood pressure or hypotension. We've even started to see how long-duration flights directly impacts the brain. Look here. You can see that the brain shifts up ever so slightly in the skull and the fluids surrounding and protecting it expand. To, you know, have, you know, me being there for such a long time, they can see how that you know, environmental effects affect us on a genetic level and what that means to our, our health. Astronaut Scott Kelly knows this better than most people. He spent 340 days aboard the International Space Station for NASA's twin study. That's where they compared his physical state in space to his twin brother, Mark, back on Earth. They found that space impacted a host of things, like his eyes, his balance, his gut microbes, his cognitive abilities, and even his gene expression. But then, touchdown. the body has to adapt again when it is thrust back to Earth. When you get back, gravity starts pulling everything to your lower extremities. The, the fluid that is shifting, you know, I got a little puffy face. It's always that way when, you're in, when I'm in space. It, all that fluid is going to be pulled to my lower extremities, and it's really going to be different. Even to lift a pencil, you don't even feel a pencil when you lift it. When we get back, even to lift a pencil, we will feel the weight. And it will take time to adjust. In fact, when Kelly landed back on Earth in 2016, he was actually two inches taller. But then, as gravity took hold, his height, along with most of the other physical changes, did eventually go back to baseline. It took about six months, with the study concluding that human health can be mostly sustained for a year in space. Kelly did, however, find some benefits. When I got back on my previous flight, I was getting a massage at one of these like, massage envy places. And the lady goes, she goes, you have the softest feet I've ever felt in my life. And she did not know I was in space. And I was like, thank you. I'm very proud of them. Dr. Sanjay Gupta, CNN, reporting. Calling Sunita Williams a trailblazer and an icon, Prime Minister Narendra Modi welcomed her and her fellow astronaut Butch Wilmore back to Earth in a heartfelt post on social media. Prime Minister Modi lauded the great courage and the boundless human spirit of both Sunita Williams and uh, Butch Wilmore. This tribute becomes more special since Sunita Williams actually has, her family has her roots uh, in Gujarat, uh, in the Prime Minister's home state. Sunita Williams' father and her grandparents hail from a tiny village called Jhulasan in Gujarat. Sunita Williams has visited Jhulasan three times after her space missions. She had donated funds to a local school there once during her previous visit. Sunita's father, Deepak Pandya, was a neuroscientist who migrated to the United States in 1957. Her extended family still lives in Gujarat and were overjoyed uh, when they saw the pictures of uh, their favorite daughter return home today. 
और उसको उन्हें हमने देखा तभी हमको संतोष हुआ था बाकी तो सारा दिन नौ महीना और तेरह दिन पूरे टेंशन में बिता है मैं सच बताऊं सब लोग खाते हैं सब लोग हंसते हैं पर मन तो बहुत सुनीता में ही रहता था आ, सुनीता तो बहुत निडर थी जब ऊपर थी वो बात करती थी देर वॉज नो नर्वसनेस और एंगजाइटी इट वॉज जस्ट प्योर जॉय एंड ग्रेटिट्यूड एंड फैसिनेशन सो आई एक्चुअली हैड डिड द मन्नत इन माई माइंड दैट आई विल कम टू द टेम्पल आफ्टर एवरी थिंग इज यू नो गोज वेल एंड आई हैड कम टू द टेम्पल So that's Falguni Pandya, who is a cousin sister of Sunita Williams, having a puja at her home in New York, celebrating the return of her sister. I want to go across to Jonathan Levy, who is a space commentator, who is now joining us. Uh, you know, I'm sure, Mr. Levy, you, like millions of all of us, uh, watched these pictures early morning uh, London time. For what was your first reaction when you saw that space vehicle, uh, that shuttle, make its way back and fall into the Gulf of America? What was your first reaction when you saw that? Yeah, it was a, an incredible moment. If you think they were traveling at over seventeen thousand miles per hour, and then right at the uh, final moments before the splashdown, it was almost like they were stationary in the sky, coming down so slowly into that glassy sea. A, a most perfect return, and then to be surrounded by dolphins uh, as they uh, bobbed up and down in the water. It was the end to a remarkable mission. uh which is really credit uh to the astronauts so you know here's the thing they were supposed to be there on an 8 day mission that 8 day mission became 286 days they got stuck there for 9 months and a little more what are the lessons that can be drawn from this entire space ordeal that uh, sunita williams and butch wilmore had to endure well the the navy pilots and this was they were you know test pilots essentially on a new capsule Uh, and i guess with technology things can go wrong and they're prepared for that thankfully it wasn't life threatening uh, but they decided that because of questions over the thrusters and helium links that it wasn't safe for them to return so they ended up uh, joining in the crew of the space station uh, and uh, thankfully they had a very fruitful time and uh, as other astronauts have said to me uh, which astronaut wouldn't want the chance to stay a bit longer in space even though their families would have wanted them home sooner so so now the question is and now the focus really is what happens next you know will will they be isolated uh, is there going to be a quarantine or a semi quarantine of some form uh, what's the kind of medical rehabilitation that they'll have to go through and, and for how long uh, I, you know what is it that their bodies have missed for the last 9 months that they were out of the earth's sort of gravity field and now are back yeah not so much a, a quarantine as to ensure that the of reasonable fitness because space takes its toll on the human body they've been weightless you know the the heart's got to work against gravity again they've got to make sure there's no long lasting effects and they'll try quite quickly to return them to their families but they themselves become a product of the research to see how the human body responds to a long time in space and although this mission was 286 days rather than 8 uh if you look at Sunny Williams she's now sort of clocked up uh, an amazing 608 days in space uh so this really is you know setting the way for longer duration human space flights in the future and her her own body becomes part of that research Uh, it's almost 2 years in space more than 600 days in space but could you also elaborate you know what are the kind of changes and risks and damages that the human body has to go through in the time that you've spent in space whether it's you know the cardiovascular pressures on your heart uh whether it is vision damage that can possibly happen and the most important thing which you know is rarely talked about the risk of radioactive damage to your body yeah well microgravity in space means that the heart doesn't have to work as hard they do a lot of exercise to make sure the blood's pumping around the body otherwise if it's not in good condition they can have pooling of the blood in the legs they can faint uh also in terms of the gravity on the eyes you've talked about vision yeah. so again the body's got to readjust to all of that uh and then there's also the exposure to cosmic radiation which is a bit of an unknown 
so we're protected a bit on the Earth by the gravitational field. Uh, but when you go beyond that into space a bit further, you know, you're going to encounter more radiation. And at times, the, the crew do have to take cover when there's a lot of solar activity. So there's all these things going on. Different organs of the body can react in different ways. Um, so it really is still quite a learning curve uh, for, for NASA and the other space agencies. And, and finally, Mr. Levy, you know, people were talking about the ISS as some kind of final frontier. Now we're talking about... You know, the next frontier, which is Mars, NASA is talking about it, Elon Musk and SpaceX are talking about it. Here in India, too, ISRO is talking about uh, what's called the Mangalyaan or sending somebody to Mars. Uh, is that now the next final frontier in the, in the world of space? Yeah, well, even NASA said, you know, they're sort of on track to attempt to get humans to Mars by the end of the decade. Uh, I think Musk has talked about actually sending an android uh, out there within the next year or two. Uh, but America still wants to go back to the moon, and that's an international effort uh, with scores of countries involved in that. Uh, and that is where they will learn about how people can live long term on a heavenly body, uh, setting the way for them going off to Mars in the next, who knows, they say by the end of the decade, but maybe within the next 10 years. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Jonathan Levy there, a uh, British space writer who's uh, now joining us with his perspective on what Sunita Williams and Bush Woolmore will have to endure now after the 286-day uh, endurance that they had in outer space.